Hey everybody, good morning, it's Vicious and welcome to a brand new Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you some stuff in Photoshop that has to do with text. How to use text inside of shapes or around shapes. A couple of examples, right here we have some text in the shape of a circle and over here we have text in the shape of a heart. I'll be showing you how to do that. Also I'll be showing you how to do something like this where you have text in the form of a shape. So both of those are what we're going to show you how to do. Now, if you were to do this the basic way in Photoshop by typing out your text and then trying to manip uh, manipulate it manually with the warp tool, transform tool, you know this would take forever and it'd be a nightmare. There's actually a nearly instant way to do it that gives you much more control and much more professional results. And just knowing that tip is all that counts and that's what I'm showing you today. Real quick, before I jump into the tutorial, I'll tell you about this up here at the top of the screen, the magnifier. I used to always have that at the top of my tutorials because YouTube back in the day only had standard resolution videos. It did not have 720p and 1080p. So when you were reading text or showing fine details, it was impossible for people to see clearly. Uh, I got rid of it the last two tutorials because I thought maybe it wasn't so necessary anymore. But I thought to myself, maybe some people want to use the uh, lower resolution video or have slower internet connections and don't watch it in high definition. And so the uh, magnifier might come in handy. So let me know if you like that being there and that makes it easier for you to follow the tutorials or I can do away with it because when it's not there it gives me more screen real estate and it's, uh, it doesn't slow down the computer and the recording as much. So with that all said, make sure you leave me a comment on that in the comment section of the video. Let's go ahead and start on the tutorial itself. I got three files already open to kind of show you examples of what we're doing. And I'm going to start one brand new blank canvas real quick to give you the most basic example. Using our text tool, I'm going to go press default, default colors. You get the uh, little icon here and you can click and you can type out some uh, text here. Type out some text. Then you hit the uh, check mark to OK that and there you go. You have text. You can retype it. You can move it. If you want to modify it, what you normally have to do is rasterize it. You can right click on your text layer, rasterize it. And now that's no longer text. It's now just pixels. And you can do stuff like transform it. So I can go to uh, transform and I can go to warp and I can bend this text and I can do weird things to it. But you can only imagine how much work it would take to produce those kind of examples I just showed you where the stuff was in shapes. So this is the easy way to do it. We're going to go to this little LG logo here. A lot of times you'll see text on the outside of a shape like in a logo. Uh, even on money, like quarters and stuff, you always have stuff going around it, medals, awards. There's a lot of times text that's going around the shape of whatever object you're looking at. To do that, what you need to do is create a path that looks like the shape you want to work with. This is a circle, so it's very easy to create a path for this. I can go over to my um, rectangle marquee tool, hold down my left click, and select the elliptical marquee tool. Now I can drag a circle around this. If I hold down the shift key, it makes it form a perfect circle. And then I can hold down the space bar to move it around to get it in position. And this is just rough for tutorial purposes. Now I have a selection around this circle. I need to make that selection into a path. Click on the paths section over here in your layers palette and click on this icon where it says make current selection into a path. And it created a path for us. We're going to double click on that path and give it a name. If you don't name a path, it's only temporary. If you do name a path, it's permanent and it will stay with your project. So we'll just stick with the default path one name and we're going to go back to our layers. Make sure you have your path selected. This is deselected. This is selected. Now when I go back to the font tool that we were using before, you'll see here's the regular typing icon. And if I mouse over that path, you're going to see it change into a new icon. When you see this icon, if you click on that path, you'll see that the text automatically transforms to fit that path. And now as I type around, you're gonna see that the font will follow that path. And this is the easiest way to create text in that kind of environment. If you okay that, you can obviously customize this. If I select all my text, I just double clicked on that. I can do things uh, such as this. I can move the text up and down as needed. Actually, the one I need is going to be this one. Yep. 
So you can see that if your path is not exactly in place for your text, you can move it just outside of your shape. You can even move it inside of your shape. If you need to uh, make it fit because you want the text to wrap all the way around, you can start uh, messing with your scale. So that's how you do it, guys. See how much faster and easier that was? That was the amazingly easy way to do it. And all it required was you knowing the tip and technique to do it. So we're going to cancel that out, and we're going to go to the next example. How to fill a shape with text to make the text itself look like the shape. And that was easy as well. So we have a new shape, we have a star, and we need to make a path for it. There's no selection tool here that's going to make that possible as far as dragging. I could use uh, something like the magic wand to be smart and click on the outside of this shape and get a selection like that. But in case you're not able to use the quick select tool, I'm going to show you the most always useful way to create a path for yourself. And that is the pen tool. So I'm going to select my pen tool, make sure that it's set to create a path and not a shape. And I'm going to click around the star to create a path. So I want to click here, one there, one here, and I'm going to continue all the way around. The pen tool is so much more useful than most people know about. The professionals definitely know about it, but people who are new might not ever use this tool, and this can be the difference between a very professional project and something that looks much more amateurish, because you can get so precise with this tool. And once I get here, you'll see that new icon that lets me know I'm clicking on the first point I created and closing my path. And the path is created. Again, we want to make this permanent by naming it. So I'm going to go back and rename this work path to a regular name. The path is already selected and I'm going to go back to my layers. If I go in my text tool, you'll see here's our regular typing icon. This is our icon we just said about typing on the path. And now one more. If I move inside, you're going to see this new icon. This is telling the uh, user that you're typing inside of that path. So if I click now, I'm going to need a much smaller font size than that. We'll go with, say, 10. And I'm just going to start typing. I'm just going to spam the letter F here. Due to the idea I'm recording, using a magnifier and a bunch of other stuff, it's lagging kind of bad, but it's working. All right, there we go. I'm going to hit OK for that. And as you can see, it's a crude fit based on the size of the font that I was using and everything else. But you can see that it did indeed constrain itself to that path and it did create the shape we wanted. If I turn off the star layer, you'll be able to tell that that was definitely a star of text. And that is going to be so useful for you depending on what you're doing. Hearts, stars, other shapes, very common things to use. And you can be creative, especially things like uh, cards, greetings, and uh, other creative things like that. This might come in handy for you. But what good is a new technique if you don't have some creative way to use it outside of the basic ways? And that's why I have the third over here. I'm going to tell you something I thought was a creative way to use this. Here is a brush, a floral brush, which has like some flowers that look like vines with little blossoms on them, some little swirls and stuff. Using that technique we just used, you know that we can type inside of this as a shape. And um, imagine if you're making, say, a love card for somebody or some kind of other greeting, you might replace one of these vines with font and make it say something. So that way, when someone reads your greeting card, they're not just looking at the image of flowers and vines. They're actually going to be reading the font, the, uh, the text that's inside of it, and you're forcing words into their thoughts. So if this was uh, a get well card for somebody and you typed in, I hope you get well soon. And this little swirl here, they're going to know the meaning of the card and it's going to be more personal. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and first on, I'm going to go ahead and make this bigger. This is a rather small image. It's only 500 pixels. Let's go ahead and change it to uh, be about 2000. It's going to look really bad, but it's going to be easier for an example. 
And what I want to do is I'm going to create a path like before. Here, I'm just going to click along and create a crude path. And it actually would be wise of me to double back on this. being careful not to click on any of the anchor points already created. There we go, so we have a path. I'm gonna go name that path real quick. And it's already selected. I'm gonna go back to my tool here and click on the path. I'm gonna left align this font. And let me see how big the font is right now. Okay, it's okay. And I'm just gonna start spamming some text here. It would have been better to use a slightly larger font, but as you can see, my cursor is working its way around as I'm holding down the T key, and we just made some text in a swirl. Waiting for it to get all the way to the end over here. About right there. And I'm going to hit OK. So my font's there. And what I had in mind for this was to spell out something like, hope you get well soon, or good, you know, whatever you're going to put your personalized message. And I'm going to not put it on the outside of this or inside of this. I'm going to replace this. So now I'm going to go back to my original image after I've got my font in place. And I'm going to grab my eraser tool. And I actually never use the eraser, so I have to actually look for it. I always use layer mask and other non-destructive ways of editing. And eraser tool. Shrink that down quite a bit. Now I'm going to delete this little part of the vine. And it's going to reveal the text that I had to put behind it. And this is on a uh, white image. I would normally have this already ripped away from the background. Or I could create a... Uh, a white fill behind it. So I'm going to go shift backspace. So create a fill layer and I'm going to fill it with white. And that'll hide that flaw. So there you go. I would have replaced that little curl with my message. And you could have done the same thing for this entire part. You could have slowly worked your way and recreated this whole thing out of font. And it would have given you a really neat effect. And that is the neat tip and trick of today for the font and text. Um, that's going to be the end of this tutorial, guys. I hope you found this tip useful. If you find these videos educational, entertaining, or anything like that, make sure you give it a thumbs up to say thanks for the time and effort. If you want to find more tutorials on Photoshop, video editing, encoding, and a lot of other things coming your way soon, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate that. I love all my subscribers, all my messages, and all my likes, of course. So this was Vicious. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.